Hi there and welcome from Ventura, California to today's webinar, Five Critical Strategies to Succeed in Your Product Management Career, sponsored and hosted by the 280 Group. You're in the right place to learn concrete strategies on how to fast track your career in product management. My name is Lori Dearman, Executive Webinar Producer with WebAttract, and I'll be your moderator and one of your hosts for today's session. I must say that I am very excited to bring on Brian Lawley, the featured speaker for today's webinar. He's the CEO and founder of the 280 Group and author of five best-selling product management books. Brian was the former president of the Silicon Valley Product Management Association. He's also the editor of the Optimal Product Management blog and newsletter, and also writes guest articles for publications such as the Software Development Forum newsletter, Softletter, and the SVPMA newsletter. Hi, Brian. So glad you could be here with us today. And uh, how are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for joining uh, or for hosting this. And thank you to everybody who's on the line for joining us. We have a very large crowd today. We sure do. Um, over 750 registrants, actually. So fantastic. It's a, a very popular topic. Yes. And uh, I, for one, am truly looking forward to hearing what you have to share with us today, Brian. And without stealing your thunder, uh, I know we have a, a book to give some a book to give away, and that we're sharing results of a very comprehensive study. So, an action-packed hour for everybody. I'm going to go ahead then and just pass it over to you. Wonderful. So thanks everyone for joining us uh, today. And for some of you, it's evening, and for us, it's morning. Um, today, I'm very pleased to be presenting a special report uh, that's the result of uh, a pretty massive amount of work on the part of my company, the 280 Group, and it's called The Five Critical Strategies to Succeed in Your Product Management Career. Now, one thing that we did when we had people sign up for the webinar is we asked what you wanted out of this webinar, and uh, we got a, a, quite a wide range of answers. Some of them were completely off topic. So some people said, hey, I want to learn best practices in product management. I want to increase the importance of product management at my company. I want to influence engineering. These are all great topics. They're, and in fact, we've covered many of them on webinars in the past, and we'll be covering them in the future. So make sure that you're on our mailing list. But I want to make sure from an expectations point of view, that everyone understands what this webinar is about because today is all about you and your specific product management career um, either how to get into the into the, the profession of product management or um, most of you about 95 percent are already in product management how to accelerate your career how to create a plan for really moving forward rapidly and getting on the fast track The report was researched and produced by my company, the 280 Group. And at the 280 Group, we help transform individuals and companies so they perform much more efficient and effective product management. We commissioned the study for a whole range of reasons. Um, the first is, in the past 15 years of our history, we've literally worked with thousands of product managers. And there's never been a comprehensive study or never did any good data collection around what makes for product management success. We really want, as part of our mission, we want to further the profession and we also, we like to help others be successful. And we offer all kinds of free resources and, and other things uh, in order to help you as product managers succeed. So we're uh, we're very very excited about sharing this study let me tell you a little bit about the background and then we'll dive straight into the the details and the data this uh, combines over 25 research studies and reports literally millions of dollars of research it took us hundreds of hours to to compile this to find all of the data and put this presentation and report together and we're very, very pleased to be sharing it with you today. We hope it make, has a dramatic impact on you in terms of moving your career forward and, and giving you some concrete details about how to build a plan. The areas we're going to cover include the rise of product management, so some data about the product management profession and why it is a really excellent profession to be in right now. Then we're going to uh, look at what you don't want to do, the five sins that can cause miserable failure in your career. Then the five critical strategies for massive career success. 
creating your own custom plan so you'll have some concrete steps uh, coming out of this so you can start to create your own plan. And then we're going to do a Q&A and uh, do type your, your questions in the Q&A uh, in the Q&A panel. And we're also going to be hosting the Q&A on our LinkedIn discussion group after the fact. So if there are questions that we don't get to today, you'll be able to chime in and we'll have some good in-depth discussions. Make sure you stay tuned for the entire webinar. Everyone who stays on will be getting a copy of my book, The Phenomenal Product Manager. It was an Amazon bestseller in the top 50 business books on its first day of release. So you'll want to you'll want to make sure you get a copy of this. So just stay tuned and we'll tell you how to do that near the end. And with that, we're going to dive right into the meat of the presentation. So section one, the rise of product management. I'm curious, I'd like for everyone to uh, type into the Q&A box, what year do you think product management was was born? What year do you think it, it was invented or came to be? All right, I'll uh, let you know what I see coming over the chat. I've got the 50s, 84 at Microsoft, 30s, 02, 95. Oh, wow, we have a whole gamut. So let's see, 1800, 1970s, 1940, 1990s, 1960. Pyramids. One, one person actually is, uh, has, is pretty close. Most of you are completely wrong, but it was actually invented by Procter & Gamble in 1931 under the concept of brand management. And one person did actually say it was invented by Procter & Gamble, but they didn't give us the year. So no one, uh, no one officially got the answer right. But in 1931, it was, uh, it was officially born as a profession. And in the 1980s and 1990s, particularly in the tech world, there were a number of companies that formalized the profession, uh, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, and Apple. I actually worked for Apple uh, during that time period. And they really formalized it and put, put some uh, more official roles and responsibilities around the concept of product management. But what you'll see in this section is it now really uh, today is a core part of virtually all Fortune 500 companies. So it's really, it's become a profession that is recognized as being as important as your engineering, your sales, your finance, your operations, and all of the other departments that you ha absolutely have to have to run an excellent company. Not only that, uh, a recent survey by CBS News showed it's now ranked as the fourth most important job in corporate America, only behind CEOs, senior executives, and general managers. So it's really come into its own, and companies are really realizing, and executives are realizing, how important it is for their overall success. One study showed that um, companies that empower product managers are actually 50% faster to market. And another study showed that 58% of product managers work directly with the CEO, CMO, CFO, and VP of sales. So executives are highly influenced by product management. And in a, a, one trend that we've seen, and, and the survey shows it, 30% um, it, it, of CEOs now have product management organizations reporting directly to them. Um, this is completely different than it was, say, 10 years ago, where product management would report up through the ranks, through the marketing department or through another department. So it's really risen in importance. But not only that, it's present literally in all company sizes companies with less than 100 all the way up to companies with 50,000 employees. And it's present across all industries. So we'll do another quick poll. How many uh, product management professionals do people think there are in the world? So type it in your Q&A box. We have a fantastic audience today. Lots of, uh, yeah, lots Let's of see. input. 40,000, 10,000, 500,000. 2.2 million, thousands, 1 million plus, 360,000, 10 million. So it's actually the person who said 10 million is the closest. Um, if you do just a, just a search on LinkedIn, there are over 8 million people who have product management in their, uh, in their job titles. So it's a huge profession. We were surprised when we went out and did this uh, that it was this large. 
in terms of the makeup of the people that you're competing with, your competition in product management is very experienced. 67% um, of product managers have greater than five years of experience. And if you look at these, uh, these different numbers, uh, a very large percentage, 35% uh, have 10 to 15 uh, or have over 10 years of experience. So you're competing with some very experienced people and you're also competing with some very well-educated people. Over 50% of product managers have master's degrees. Hey, Brian, a quick, uh, Brian, a quick question from another Brian. D does that number include product owners? No, it doesn't. So the number is probably even larger if, if someone has the title of product owner, but they're actually doing uh, product management. And we'll see that there's, I have some stats on the confusion and the, the different titles that product managers can, can have inside of companies. <clears throat> now, in addition to there being lots of people in the profession, it pays very well. This is a salary.com survey from 2013 uh, all the way up to $210,000, and that's for an individual product manager. And it's ranked as one of the top jobs by Money Magazine, one of the top 10 jobs in America. But not only that, it, as, as you all probably know, product management is well positioned to be, product managers are well positioned to become executives because they have to interact with every aspect of the company, sales, customers, support, channel, operations, and all the way through to press and analysts. They get a better understanding of all facets of the company, all facets of the market, and they're really in a position to become executives, uh, much stronger executives than someone who comes up through the ranks in one of the other professions inside of a corporation. And I'll give you just some examples of famous product managers that became pretty well-known executives. The first is Steve Ballmer. Uh, Steve ran Microsoft for many years, and his first job was actually an associate brand manager at Procter & Gamble. So he started out in the product management profession. Uh, and it's hard, if you know anything about him, it's hard to uh, think of him as being an associate anything. But uh, he, he's a pretty well-known leader that started out in product management. But another one is um, Marissa Meyer, and she was the first product management professional hired into Google and rose through the ranks and now, of course, is the CEO of Yahoo. Another example is Scott Cook. He also started at Procter & Gamble, and he's the founder of Intuit, which makes Quicken and TurboTax. And Scott is a huge believer in product management. In fact, so much so that he uh, donated $5 million of his own money to the University of Wisconsin to to set up the world's first product management uh, official product management degree. Uh, I believe it's a master's degree in product management. No presentation these days would be complete without a discussion of Apple, and I like to call these call this picture Steve Squared. Um, it's the two Steves, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, and many people think of Steve Jobs as sort of an Uber product manager. But there's actually a story behind Apple that um, almost most, most of the world doesn't really know, and that is there was a third person who actually helped, uh, who was brought in right at the beginning to help the two Steves, and his name was Mike Markula, and he was the original Apple product manager. And uh, per Steve Jobs, this quote, it's not Steve Jobs, Wozniak reveals the one person who actually des deserves credit for Apple's early success. Mike Markula was a product manager at Intel, so that was his profession, and that's one of the reasons why Apple is such a well-run company, because early in their DNA, he put the concepts of product management into the company, and it really paid off uh, to this day. Now at Procter & Gamble, the last seven CEOs have been former product managers. So it's, it's pretty much a requirement if you want to be a product man, or excuse me, if you want to be a CEO at Procter & Gamble. But along with that, product management is just a huge opportunity. A simple search showed 10,000 job openings uh, on LinkedIn. So there's lots and lots of opportunity. It's a great profession. Um, and 66% of product managers are, uh, say they're motivated by delivering great products and driving a vision. So it's not just your average everyday job where you're crunching numbers or doing something that's, uh, that's not inspiring. It really is a, a, a job where people get passionate about what they're doing.
so that's the, the end of the first section, product management rising. You've learned that product management's uh, become much more important than ever. It's a great career path and it's a huge opportunity. And all you have to do is make sure that you're well positioned to take advantage of it. So what stops people from rising in product management quickly? And that'll be the topic of our next, uh, our next section. So let's dive into this. Now these are five things that you want to make sure that you never do in your career. They can take you off of the fast track almost instantly. So the first one is uh, sin number one, no one understands what you do. So as a product manager, um, the role of product management varies dramatically from one company to the next. And it's very common that there's overlap, there's confusion, there's not role clarity. <clears throat> and as a result, People in other departments and people throughout the company uh, won't, won't see what the value is that you add. So you want to make sure that people understand what your role is and you communicate it effectively and really continue to communicate what the value is you bring as a product manager. In, in a study that uh, the 280 group did, um, it showed that 75% of companies don't understand product management. Um, is the product management role at your company well understood by executives and other groups? Three quarters of the people said no. So part of your job as a product manager is to be very clear about what your role and responsibility is and continuously communicate it to the other groups and the other stakeholders you interact with so they understand what you do and the value you bring to the role. Another sh survey showed that there are over a hundred different job titles used for jobs uh, of people doing uh, that actually are doing product management and have product management responsibilities. And another study showed that almost half of companies out there have poorly defined product manager management. It's either well defined it or they have no product management at all. So the result. Again, if people don't understand what you do and why it's critical to the company, you can work as hard as you want, but you don't get rewarded for all that excellent hard work. So that's sin number one. Sin number two is not being as effective as you can be. And I love this quote. This is from Peter Drucker. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. Uh, for many product managers, learning occurs on the job, and we'll show you some statistics about that in a little bit. But the average product manager is overloaded. Um, they have a lack of tools and infrastructure. They have no coach, no mentor. And most of them, uh, a, a lot of them, haven't, perceived, haven't actually received training. So I want everyone to take a, their best guess at um, what percentage of the product managers out there do uh, have actually received formal training, have been taught, how to do their job and how to do their profession. Let's see, 15 percent, 60%, 30%, 66%, 40%, 5%, uh, 20%. So most of you are way, way off. I saw one person who actually got the, uh, got the correct number and I'm pretty sure it's a somebody who works for the 280 group and is sitting in on the webinar. But, um, <laughs> but the, the answer is, uh, is actually less than 2%. So if you see 50 product managers, only one has had formal training. Well, only one has been taught how to do their job. Wow. Which means if, if you get trained, you have a huge leg up on them. And additionally, most product managers have to learn on the job. So if you've ever put, put together some IKEA furniture, you'll love this cartoon. Um, uh, having trained literally tens of thousands of product managers, we, we constantly have people come to our classes who say, yep, I was in customer service, and then they told me I was a product manager and uh, to go do the job. But they didn't give me any kind of training, and they expected me to learn everything on the job, on, sort of on the fly. Um, very few companies have their own in-house training programs for product management. Product managers come from a huge and varied background. Everything from sales to customer support to technical support uh, to from engineering, literally all over the map. So they tend to have uh, tend to have very different skill sets, and as a result, the results that uh, that they produce are are varied. 
if you're lucky, you'll have a really good coach or mentor, uh, perhaps your boss or someone else who's senior who can teach you the profession. Uh, I was lucky enough to have several people like this in my career, but most people don't. So you're kind of thrown into the thrown into the uh, the frying pan as a product manager. Now we also have statistics about the average product manager um, being overloaded. In one survey, over 50% were asked more to do less since the uh, since the recession started, and the number of products managed went from two up to an average of 3.3. And this statistic um, really surprised us. But 78% of product managers say they work weekends, um, six hours on average. So as product managers, you're really, really overloaded, and it's very hard to be effective if you have uh, that much work and you don't have specific strategies and ways of dealing with it and prioritizing things so that you're not constantly doing tactical fire, fire, drill, fire drills, but instead you can get to the strategic level. Now, additionally, most product managers have a lack of tools and infrastructure. Um, their product management departments have never been optimized. They don't have standardized templates. They have a lack of access to the data that they need to actually do their job. Um, <clears throat> there's rarely a knowledge base inside of a company so that you can learn from the efforts of other product managers. And uh, one study showed that 30% um, uh, that many, many, many companies have poor or no process, and 30% uh, in one study uh, didn't even know what process they had. And This is a development methodology study that was done by Quantum Whisper and the 280 group. And <clears throat> it shows that 38% of the, uh, the respondents were doing agile, 16% were doing waterfall, and 30% said they actually don't know what de development methodology is being used. So lots of uh, lack of process, lack of infrastructure. Now additionally, uh, very few product managers have mentors or coaches. If you look at this data down on the bottom right, 27, only 27 percent of all employees have a mentor or a coach to begin with. Product management tends to be even lower than that. So uh, if you do have a coach, consider yourself lucky or a mentor. But uh, then that's one of the critical things for really moving your career forward is finding someone who's been there and done that who can really help you out. Sin number three is going to be uh, being too tactical and not being strategic. Most product managers, as I just showed, are underwater. They're either too overwhelmed or busy to be a strategic leader. And what suffers is, as we just covered, uh, their effectiveness, their career advancement, and equally important, their job satisfaction. Few leaders can be both strategic and tactical. According to Chet Holmes, less than 3% of the population uh, in corporate America knows how to be both strategic and tactical. And if you want to rise up in your career, this is, this is going to be key. You have to learn to be a strategist and also get all of the tactical work done in parallel. Sin number four, no formal career plan. So either your career path is not defined. Um, you can't expect companies to take responsibility for this these days. It's really up to you. And you have to create it yourself. Um, the people who do, the people who create a specific plan, and we'll show you some, uh, some ideas for creating a plan, um, really end up thriving. And we'll show you some stats about uh, what that really means. From the individual growth strategy study, this says, employers are increasingly unwilling to promise and formally manage career opportunities. HR policies are shifting accountability for career management from employer to employee. So you're really kind of on your own. You need to make sure that you're in charge of your career and not rely on your company. Sin number five and the last one, this is from a Gallup poll. It showed that 70% of American workers are not engaged or actively disengaged. What that means is they really, they really don't like their jobs. Um, and to being a product manager and not enjoying the job is definitely a sin. Um, because you have the chance to make a real difference, you have the chance to be effective, uh, you have the chance to get credit, but if you're not receiving or you're not doing those three things, if you're not making a difference, you're not being effective and you're not getting credit, what happens is you start to become jaded over time. 
And uh, it's product management isn't a profession where you get a lot of external strokes from people and a lot of extra external credit unless you specifically have a plan uh, to make sure people know what you're doing. So this can be a really vicious cycle and it can affect, uh, affect your, your performance pretty dramatically. So I'm going to give you an example. There was a product manager that worked at Apple. Oh, I, I, I'll read the quote. A bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't go anywhere until you change it. And uh, th so the product manager at Apple is a perfect example of this. He was a really, really good product manager, had great skills, um, made a huge difference, um, undertook a, a very large initiative, probably the biggest and most important initiative for the company. But he had a bad attitude and he hadn't focused on those three things, uh, being more effective and getting visibility and getting credit. And he became jaded and, uh, and that became his personal brand. So people knew him as sort of the, the cranky person, the person who was going to be um, negative more often than positive. And what happened was despite the fact that he had really worked hard and done amazing things for the company, he found that he was stuck and he couldn't move up. And as a result, he actually, he actually ended up having to leave the company and go elsewhere in order to move his career forward because uh, his bad attitude just, uh, just overtook everything else that he, uh, that he did. So he kind of had to, you know, he had to change his attitude and he had to, he ended up having to leave the company. So that's the five sins. Uh, first is your job's not well understood. Second is you're not as effective as you could be. Third, being too tactical and not strategic. Fourth is not having a formal career plan. And fifth, um, not allowing your job to be as enjoyable as, pos as possible, not setting yourself up for success. Now, Brian, I, I, it looks like we've got our, our sins pretty clearly laid out. So... Um... Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the Surefire strategies for success. Great. So the, now we're going to talk about what can you do to rise quickly. And this is the most important part of the presentation. So the five strategies for massive success. We're going to start off with a case study. And this was another product manager at Apple. He was an individual, and he had an MBA from a pretty prestigious school, although um, I'm not convinced that, that that was a factor in terms of him rising so quickly. But what he did was he created a very specific and aggressive plan. Uh, he wanted to rise up and become a vice president and become a CEO. And what he did was he applied the five strategies that we're going to show you. Within four years, he became a vice president of marketing. And I can tell you that when that happened, all the other product managers around, uh, when they watched how he rise, rose so quickly, they all scratched their heads and thought, well, I'm working just as hard as he is. How, how did he manage to pull this off? What he did was he applied the strategies. The first ties back into the sins, and that is make sure you evangelize your role. So get clarity on what you do and what you don't do. Make sure you're clear with your boss and your managers. And make sure that you communicate this over and over to your team uh, and to your stakeholders, because if you don't, they'll start to um, they'll start to decide what your job as a product manager is and isn't, and you don't want to end up in that position. You want people to understand what you do, what you contribute, and what you don't do. Um, research findings indicate that role clarity influences job satisfaction and organizational commitment. So the faster that you get this going, uh, the happier you're going to be and the more on board your team's going to be. And another study showed individuals who reported higher role clarity also reported higher role effectiveness and perform better than those with lower clarity. So again, <clears throat> if you want to be effective, make sure your role is clear and you're communicating it and evangelizing it. Strategy two is to become much more effective overall. So there are things like templates, um, productivity strategies. Uh, when you get a copy of my book, The Phenomenal Product Manager, there's actually an entire chapter on how to be more productive. Things like <clears throat> how, to run a, how to run much shorter and more effective meetings, to free up time on your calendar, how to blast through your email. Um, you need to learn prioritization techniques, otherwise you'll constantly be 
uh, responding to the the fire drills that happen minute by minute, but you won't necessarily have a bigger picture and be working on things that are much more important and be and know when you have to say no. Even though it looks like an urgent fire drill, you may need to, to tell people it's important, but I'm not going to focus on it right now. No is probably the most important word that you need to learn in your profession. It's uh, you have to say no appropriately and you have to you to learn how to do it very in a very firm yet professional manner. And lastly, find some help. So if you can recruit uh, an admin or someone from another department who's interested in product management as a career, oftentimes they'll be willing to do small projects for you. Um, or if you if you need to bring in a contractor or uh, or get help uh, in other ways. If you're truly overwhelmed and you show your manager, here's everything that's on my plate, here's a prioritized list, the following things are not going to get done because it's not humanly possible, uh, and then you ask for help, um, your manager will at least understand what your situation is, and oftentimes you can find a way to get some people to chip in. So I'll give you a case study on this. Uh, there was a product manager at Symantec, and she was writing an MRD, a market requirements document. and she ended up spending several hours tracking down old ones. So she had to email people and make phone calls to try to find examples of good MRDs because they had no templates. And she looked for a standard template. They had nothing. Um, so she really had to create the MRD essentially from scratch, piecing together things from other product managers. And the result was uh, she ended up spending hours and hours of wasted time and along with that, the final document wasn't nearly as effective as it could have been because it was, uh, again, she, she pieced it together from scratch rather than the, it was being the result of best practices being collected into a standardized template that everyone used. Now imagine if she took the eight or ten additional hours that it took to write this from scratch and she applied that to doing some strategic work and communicating the results of that to the executives and to her team regarding the market overall and the, the strategy and moving forward with the product. That would have helped her rise up and be viewed much more as a strategic leader rather than doing the tactical work of you know, trying to find a template. Strategy three is creating a winning career plan. And for this one, we're going to do a formal poll. So for this poll, um, we're going to ask how many people here actually have a written career plan. And it doesn't, it doesn't count to, uh, to have a plan in your head. You have to have a formal written career plan. And uh, folks, you should see that poll on your screen. I see um, just about 70% of us having voted. So we're going to close that up in, in just a moment. And uh take a look at those answers here let's take a look so let's see it looks like about 15 percent of you have a written career advancement plan that number is actually a little higher than I would have expected uh, just based on my own informal experience usually it's about uh, between five and ten percent so interesting um, let's jump back to the slides and I'm going to show you why you have to have a plan so plans and goals are really critical to succeed and I'm going to tell you about a famous study that was done at Harvard. In this study they went to, uh, they studied all of the people who got an MBA from Harvard uh, from a particular class and years later they went back and they found that three percent of those graduates earned literally ten times as much as the other 97 percent combined. And the only difference between those 3% that they could find was that the 3% had had clear written goals when they were in business school. So um, having the goals, if you want to earn 10 times what the person sitting next to you is earning, get yourself a plan and write it down that's clear, that has a good strategy, that's, uh, that you can act on and start immediately. To build that plan, there are a number of elements you're going to want to include. Obviously, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish in one, three, five years, ten years across your entire career? What skills are you going to develop? Who are your five most important allies in your company? So who do you, whose support do you need and who do you have to have the best relationships with in order to uh, drive strategy and really be a leader and be effective at making your product successful and making your career successful? 
who's going to coach you and who's going to mentor you. Um, you want to find people who've been very, very successful in the profession, who've done what you want to do, <clears throat> and just simply ask them, you know, I really admire what you've done. Would you be, uh, be willing to mentor me? Hey, Brian, um, quick question. Quick question from Mara. Uh, Mara says, I'm in the second half of my career. Can a written plan still be useful? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it could be that in the second half of your career, you just you want to stay at the same level, but you want to uh, dramatically increase your earnings. Or it could be that you're in the second half of your career and you're ready to become a CEO. How are you going to get there? Um, you need a plan at every single stage. It's no different than financial planning, um, you, you know, uh, planning for your retirement. You need a plan in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and your 50s, even though the plan varies over time. Um, the last point I wanted to make on that previous slide was what's your differentiation going to be? And that should be part of your, uh, part of your plan. How are you going to stand out from the crowd? Um, strategy four is going to be to get training. Um, you want to be that one out of 50 product managers who's actually been trained. Um, you want to be in the 2%. So, and training isn't a one-time thing. Um, you want to make an annual commitment. The people who have been trained tend to have only ever gone to one course. They went to one product management course and now I'm a product manager. And what, really what you want to do is you want to, uh, you want to take a course on foundational skills to start so you understand the entire product life cycle and you have all core skills. But then you want to take additional courses and you owe it to yourself to take training either every six months or, or every year. And there are other things you're going to want to be trained on. Um, soft skills are absolutely important. Once you've learned the foundation of how to do market requirements, how to do business cases, how to launch a product, um, then you want to take soft skills uh, classes so you can learn how to uh, negotiate, learn how to influence people, uh, learn how to be a better and more effective communicator. If you're working in, a, in an in industry where they're doing agile development, for instance, software, um, you'll definitely want to take some training on Agile. Um, and along with that, you want to take some advanced courses. Uh, you want to want to learn things like leadership. You want to learn things like um, uh, you may want to go and get a certification. That's one of the ways that you can really stand out is become a certified product manager or Agile certified product manager. Um, so make the commitment to yourself. You owe it to yourself. If you're, you're working hard every day, get trained so you can be more effective and, and also so you can stand out from the crowd. One thing about training is that you get measurable results, and this has been proven time, again, time and again. And the data source on this is Accenture. Uh, Accenture did a study that showed the people who, who are trained are 17% more productive. So imagine having taking uh, the time that you're spending right now, 40 hours a week, and having 17% of it freed up so that you can become strategic and focus on being a leader. Um, it also shows that people who are trained uh, perform at a 20% higher level than uh, relative to their peers. So if you want to get great reviews uh, from your boss and, and get salary increases, that's the way to do it. And the return on investment is absolutely clear for training. It's 353%. So for, for every dollar you invest, you get an, a really excellent payback. So I'm going to give you uh, a couple of examples of, of people um, uh, and how training isn't a one-time event. We're going to look at Lee, Bill, and Marissa. Now Lee is an individual product manager. He's kind of the typical product manager in that, uh, in that he moves into product management from another profession, uh, maybe technical support or engineering. He learns on the job, like most of us do, and he becomes somewhat proficient. Over time, uh, you know, he's an individual contributor for many years, and over time, in maybe eight to ten years, he might become a manager, so then he might start to manage other product managers. And that's kind of the typical pro progression in product management. You know, you, you learn on the job, uh, you do uh, what most product managers do, and you know, eight to ten years out, you'll have a group under you and, and so on. Uh, we'll take a second case in point, and that's Bill. Um, he moves into product management, maybe from sales. He looks like a sales guy. Um, he takes a foundational product management course, so he understands and has this, the core skills that every product manager needs. He's immediately proficient, so he can manage uh, his pro all products 
that he, he's responsible for at any phase in the life cycle. But he keeps learning on the job, and he's promoted to a, a manager after six years. So uh, for him, uh, it was a little faster track. He got the core skills. But let's look at what Marissa does. And Marissa is one of the, the 3%. Um, she moves into product management, and she takes a foundation course and continues to learn on the job. But then she goes and takes advanced courses. So every year she does you know, soft skills, leadership, um, and really builds her portfolio of skills. She also earns certification, so she becomes a certified product manager, and this helps her stand out um, in terms of, for her team, she's able to have a, a certified product manager certificate hanging in her office, so people understand that she has a formal credential in this profession, but also uh, in terms of opportunities when, uh, when she's interviewing, it's, it's something that really makes her stand out and differentiates herself on her resume. She find, but she also finds a coach and mentor. Uh, she she uh, gets the vice president of product management to be her, her specific mentor and help her out. And the result is, well, she's a manager at four years and then a VP at seven years. And um, for all three of the ex examples, I've seen all of them literally hundreds of times in my, well, excuse me, I've seen the, the I've seen them hundreds of times except for Marissa and I've only seen Marissa about half a dozen times because most people don't have a plan and don't execute it the way that she did. So the question is who do you want to be and um, it's perfectly fine to be any one of these three people but make a conscious decision and be real clear about how much effort and what you're going to put into it. And strategy five, get a coach. Coaches are great because they can help you avoid doing uh, career-ending career, career ending mistakes. Um, they can give you advice on how to excel, and they can really help you dramatically accelerate your career. Um, to give you an ex and just some stats on why coaching is so important, the coaching market is actually growing massively. It's growing like 18% per year. And 87% of HR managers think that coaching, the value of coaching is very, very high. And studies show that it has huge benefits. Um, people who have a coach <clears throat> experience a 67% increase in teamwork, a 71% increase in relationships with their supervisors. So if you want to have a better relationship with your boss, get a coach because the coach can really help you figure out how to interact better with your boss and be, be much a much better employee. A 61% increase in job satisfaction and a 52% reduction in conflict. So. By getting a coach, you get teamwork, a better relationship with your boss, job satisfaction, uh, reduction in conflict, and a whole range of other things. And so we showed that training delivers 18, an 18% 18 productivity gain. But now let's uh, let's use the Q&A box. What what kind of productivity gain do you think you get if you combine training with coaching? So say you tra take a training course and then you have a coach uh, that uh, you follow up with and you work with. 40%, um, 50%. 70%, 50%, oh, we're getting lots of answers, 30%, someone says no idea, 18%, somebody said 150%, so, um, and then other people asked, is this coach in the company or outside, um, <clears throat> but the answer is, the studies show that if you have a coach with training, you get an 88% gain. So you are becoming dramatically effective. This is a 400% more effective, four times as effective than just getting training by itself. So having training with a coach is a huge uh, strategy that's going to really dramatically help you. So that's the five strategies. Make sure you evangelize what you're doing, become much more effective, have a written career plan, get training on an annual basis, and get a coach. So how are you going to get started today? And this is the last section about how to create a plan. Crafting your own custom plan. You're definitely going to want to find a coach or a mentor, as we mentioned. Um, you're going to want to commit to annual training. You're going to want to arm yourself with productivity and learning tools. And 
if you're still unsure about who needs a coach, um, I like to, to sort of bring this example up. So this is Tiger Woods, obviously, and uh, it's debatable whether he's the world's greatest golfer right now, um, but he certainly has been at times in his career. And isn't it funny that the person who's the world's best at something um, ends up having a coach to help them get better, yet the rest of us, the rest of us don't don't think we need coaches or, or the idea doesn't occur to us. So if Tiger Woods needs a coach, who else needs a coach? And I would say the answer is everyone needs a coach. I personally have two different coaches in different areas of my life. And um, I think it's just, uh, it's hugely beneficial. Um, in your plan, uh, you're going to want to make sure that when you're choosing your coach, you, you use the right criteria. Somebody, they have to have extensive experience, they have to help you clarify and evangelize your role. They have to be able to help you build your career plan. And so you come to them with a plan and say, here's what I'd like to do. Here's how I'm going to execute it and, and get their input to make sure that the plan is as solid as possible. Because you want to be in that 3%. You don't want to be the other 97% who are earning one-tenth as much. And also make sure the coach has achieved what you want. Part of your plan should be to do a skills assessment. Um, this is a simple skills assessment listing some uh, common common skills for product management, but it, it has to be included. You need to assess yourself in terms of how good you are at each of the different core skills for your profession. Uh, we showed coaching before. I didn't show the ROI, though. The ROI on coaching is even higher than training. It's actually 700%, so it's huge. Along with the coaching, you're going to want to, in your plan, specify what kind of training you're going to, you're going to want to go to. And, and it's really important that you choose the right kind of training. So the first thing about training is you want to make sure you go to classes that, have, that are, are small. Because small class sizes are associated with much higher performance. So the last thing you want to do is be in a class uh, where you've got 50 people or in, in a class uh, like, like the one pictured on the left here where um, it, it's a lecture style and you aren't going to be interacting, you're not going to be doing, uh, the, you know, the instructor may not even know your name by the end of the course. And going to a course with 25 or 30 or 50 people um, is completely different than going to a course with, say, 15 people. Um, the trainers that are doing the course have to be actively doing product management. You cannot learn product management from a professor. You also can't learn it from somebody who is a professional training, who only does training for a living. Um, even if they have formerly been a product manager a long time ago, uh, product management has, has changed. You have to have somebody who is actively doing product management, who's a trainer and a consultant or who, who's literally in the trenches um, in order to get great training. The person has to have at least 10 years of experience as well because you don't want to be learning from somebody who's got you know three or five years of experience. It's got to be somebody who's done all of the core product management and all the advanced product management uh, tasks and skills many, many times. You want to make sure that your training has how-to skills and tools. So take training that teaches you how, not just what and that has lots of hands-on exercises, and also that has templates and teaches you skills you can immediate, immediately apply. So when you walk out of a training course, you should have a good core set of, uh, of, of tools and skills that literally you can apply that week. When you do training, also make sure, for this is for your foundational training, make sure that it covers the complete product life cycle. And this is uh, the product life cycle uh, from uh, the Association of International Product Marketing and Management, the seven phases. It's a worldwide standard of conceive, plan, develop, all the way to retire. And it's really important that you as a product manager um, learn the complete product life cycle. And it needs to be a flexible framework. So it's got to be something that can be applied in, to your specific situation. Um, you have to learn both product management and product marketing management, and those terms are uh, oftentimes interchangeable, and the roles, um, roles and responsibilities are all over the map from one company to the next, so you really want to make sure you learn the tasks across the entire life cycle because um, you never know if you move to a different company you the role may be defined differently in your company right now you may be rec just responsible for the the first part of the product life cycle the conceive and plan 
um, and then when you move you may be also be responsible for launch market and retire but even if you're not responsible for it right now you need to have the skills for the other areas uh, the reason being uh, that you, you're going to interact with people who are doing those particular areas and you need to be able to influence them effectively. You also want to make sure that part of your plan is to get some templates because templates can save you up to 40 percent of the time. So it's our hope that you've learned from this this presentation. We, we've talked about the rise of product management. We hope you've learned why it's even more important than you may have thought as a product management. The things you don't want to do, the five sins and the five critical strategies for success. And then how to create your own custom plan. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the Q&A. Okay. Well, I've got a question here, um, Brian. What's more important, uh, training or coaching? Well, they're both equally important. And if you can do them both together, it's it will the results will be huge. If I absolutely had to choose between the two, I would start off doing some foundational training and then I would go uh, and get a coach um, but you know the ideal is to do both of them uh, if at all possible okay and how can I break into the field of product management to break into the field of product management uh, one of the best best things you can do is go and get some core training so you understand uh, what the what the job is and you can talk intelligently at a uh, at an interview and or read some good books on it. The way that I broke into it was I, I was in technical support and I got to know the product manager who, uh, of the product I was working on and I volunteered to do some additional work for him on the side uh, to help, uh, help him be more effective and take some things off his plate. And when a job, job opening came up, I went after it and since they already knew me and they'd seen some of my work, they, uh, they brought me in. Uh, Brian, next question from, from Ray. What are the best ways to recruit a coach? One way is you can find someone who's a professional coach and simply hire them. Um, if, you, if you are trying to sort of recruit, usually what you're doing is looking for a mentor that's inside your company. Um, and that can, and, and the first criteria is find someone who's succeeded uh, that, that is where you want to be. But in, and usually internally at your company, and they're not going to be called a coach. You know, they're going to be there. It's going to be a mentor. For many people, they'll get a mentor, and then they'll also hire a professional coach. A mentor will give you advice um, on an infrequent basis. Um, what a coach will do, especially a professional coach, a coach will sit down with you, create your plan, help you set goals, and then one of the biggest benefits of having a coach, and I find this personally, is then the coach, usually, usually coaching sessions go like every 10 days because studies show that um, it takes about 10 days for your commitment level to start to fall. So what a coach will do is they'll, they'll work with you and you make commitments about what on the plan you're going to, to focus on and then the coach can help you keep you accountable. So professional coaches are a great approach and, uh, and again internally if you can find someone who's done what you want to do, that, that can be a good mentor mentorship okay folks we have uh, far more questions than we could entertain today uh, so I wanted to let you know that um, we'll be continuing this conversation on the LinkedIn group you can see that URL on the screen also um, Brian's contact information yeah and if you haven't joined our LinkedIn group we have 35,000 product management professionals on it the URLs on the screen join it and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll answer the questions, uh, the remaining questions there. So again, this, uh, this was researched and produced by the 280 group. We, we transform organizations and, and individuals and we help you perform highly effective product management based on our innovative and easily adopted optimal product process framework. What's unique about us is we have a comprehensive career-long solution. So we offer foundational and advanced training but we also offer certifications and uh, we have a coaching program, we have templates, we have an entire book series and a skills assessment. So we have a complete solution if you want to really advance your career. And so if you were just here for the educational portion, um, thank you for joining us. But otherwise, let me, uh, let me quickly go over who the 280 group is. We're called the 280 group because we're located off the world famous Highway 280 in Silicon Valley. 
Um, for those of you who don't know me, my background is Apple Computer, and I've written all kinds of uh, books and won uh, awards in thought leadership and written all kinds of articles and been president of the Silicon Valley Product Management Association. And my team is just amazing. They're handpicked from my network. They've all got 15 to 30 years of experience, and they're all certified product managers and authors and thought leaders and well-known experts. Um, our clients are anywhere from uh, small companies all the way up to Fortune 500, and we were listed as one of the top 10 consulting firms in Silicon Valley. Uh, one of the unique things about us is we have uh, a process that's called the optimal product process. There's really nothing like it uh, in, the, in the world. It's based on over 200 years of combined experience on my team to, to develop it. It's very flexible and innovative, and it combines strategic and tactical, and it's the core foundation of everything that we do. So uh, for all of our courses, for all of our uh, coaching programs, for all of our templates, uh, it, you'll, you'll find the optimal product process as the basis. Our training courses are highly effective. Um, all of our instructors are working instructors, so they are actively doing product management, and they all have 15 to 30 years of experience. Our foundation course, Optimal Product Management, will literally transform you as a product manager. It will give you the key skills and foundation you need <clears throat> to be successful at every phase in the product life cycle. Um, our classes are always small. We, we never hold classes that are larger than 15 people. And you walk out of our classes with how-to skills that you can immediately apply. Um, and all our courses come with corresponding templates, so you're productive. Uh, the templates come in, in the form of um, eight what we call toolkits. Um, we have a product called the Product Management Office Professional. Uh, it helps you write more effective documents faster. There's over 200 best practices templates covering the entire product life cycle. And again, we teach this in the courses, and then you walk away with copies of the templates. And it covers literally everything in product managers management. So if you want to be much more effective as a product manager, a copy of the Product Management Office Professional is going to be uh, something you want to have uh, in your toolkit. And last but not least, our coaching programs. Um, our coaches are very seasoned, very experienced. They, they can help you run. Uh, we have an online assessment. They can help you run that and build a career plan. Um, they meet with you every 10 days to keep you accountable. You set the goals, and then the coach works with you to make sure that you are uh, doing what you need to do to achieve those goals. And they really help you focus where you need help the most. Um, so just uh, as out of curiosity, if you, if you were able to get training and an assessment and a career plan, coaching, uh, product management office templates, um, books, all the different things from the 280 group, Think about how much it's worth to you. What what would it add to your earnings in the next year or three years or ten years? I know when I sat down and really looked at this, you know, I could easily see earning uh, you know an additional fifty to a hundred thousand dollars over uh, over the course of uh, a couple of years if, with a good focused plan, um, and that that I think is even conservative. I think we're going to um, go ahead and wrap up. I'd like to say thank you to WebAttract. I forgot to mention, but WebAttract uh, is hosting this webinar. If you want to do a really, really amazing professional webinar with uh, dramatically better results than you can get yourself, um, contact WebAttract because they are, they are the best. And thanks to everyone for attending and, and for all of the great questions. We'll continue it on LinkedIn. Special thanks to you, Brian, uh, and the 280 Group. Uh, again, as your moderator, this is Lori Dearman saying thank you and have a great rest of the week. Goodbye for now.